Hey, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Welcome back to another wonderful episode of Baggage Claim with Jazz and Charles. The only show where we teach you how to claim the bag, secure the bag, and most importantly, protect the bag. Protect the bag. <laughs> I'm Charles. I'm Jazz. And we are here today with a special uh, host, co-host. Absolutely. Yes, she is co-founder <laughs> of Mino Learning. We got Zahira Callaway here with us. Yes. Yes. And uh, we're super excited for today's episode. Charles and I have been speaking a lot about uh, education in mm -hmm. general and how our community is changing and how the root of the change is education. And that's how our people will be able to keep up. So we are yeah super excited to have uh, an educator in the building introduce yourself tell us about yourself hi everybody i'm zaheer calloway uh one of the co-founders of the mino learning collaborative and i'm very excited to be on this show i'm so proud of y'all <laughs> uh we've known each Thank other you. since like what 2014 2014 it's a long 2014. time yeah we went to college <laughs> together and i'm so proud and i'm so happy that he's like you know just teaching the community about securing the bag, which y'all said, securing the bag. Claiming it, claiming uh, securing it, it and protecting it. it. Yes, and before yes. you do, tell them, what, what college did we go to? We went <laughs> to the University of Central Florida. Oh, oh nice. Charge <laughs> one. Yes, yes. <laughs> so, um, but yes, I, yes, um, I'm one of the co-founders of the Mino Learning Collaborative, and I'm very excited to be here today. And that was beautiful. Awesome. Helen from Miami, Florida. It's great to yeah. see somebody, somebody that, looks like us you know you know what yeah. i'm saying doing what you're doing um it's definitely i give you a lot of props for being an educator and putting so much passion into it because i feel like that's kind of a thankless profession you know what i'm saying <laughs> you don't get all of the respect that you deserve when no. in reality teachers they make the nation they like they make a large the part of the nation they like lead yeah. the world literally Honestly. they like put the knowledge in the children's head that's yeah. really important before we start how do you feel about that you know your role as a teacher i am humble um mm. to be a te teacher uh it's one of those things where you see children grow i um was blessed with an experience to have sick like um before I moved to high school, I, I'm now I'm a high school teacher, but before mm -hmm. that I was a middle school teacher and I was able to see kids grow from like 11 to 14. <laughs> and yeah. it's a beautiful thing when you see kids and they mature and they, and they like almost blossom right before your eyes. Like that there's kids who were, who didn't have manners, couldn't say no ma'am, no, no thank you, nothing like that. And to like just hearing good stories about them from my like peers who work at the high school they teach at, and them texting me now, like, ooh, miss, you got to see my grades. <laughs> <laughs> or, ooh, I'm involved in this. And I'm just like, I'm so proud of you. Like, send me your cash app. I'll be blessing the cash app. <laughs> That's amazing. I wish it was my teacher back in the day. <laughs> <laughs> I don't tell too beautiful. many people that because they might start texting me, be like, hey, hey money bags. I ain't got to, like, hey, the cash app teacher. <laughs> That's funny. Um, OK, so tell us because I feel like we know what Mino Learning is, but give our audience a quick synopsis of what, what really is Mino Learning. So our mission is the Mino Learning Collaborative exists to harness the power of educators who empower students to change the world. We create mm -hmm. spaces for BIPOC educators to learn, grow, and disrupt together. Our mission essentially is that we want to create a space for BIPOC educators to collaborate, to grow together, to figure out how can we use this network that we have to leverage it into real change into Miami's education system. Because mm. there are a lot of people who feel frustrated about the state of education in Miami. And we're just trying to connect us all because we're obviously all in different pockets. Let's all connect. Let's all collaborate. Let's create the lessons that we want to see in our classrooms. Let's, let's do the work that is needed so that our children, our black and brown children can get the education they deserve. Man, absolutely. Uh, before we go forward, can you explain to the people what BIPOC is? I heard you say that a few times. Oh, okay. Uh, you know what? I'm such a teacher. My brain, I'll be thinking yeah. <laughs> like everyone else knows. So BIPOC yeah. is Black, Indigenous, People of Color. So it's Black. an inclusive term to make sure that everyone's represented. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's beautiful. So when you, well, I'm sorry. I just wanted to uh, ask real quick. So when you explain what Mino Learning is, to me, it sounds like you really want to bring together, you know, mm -hmm. Black brown indigenous teachers and collaborate yes. and find out the best ways to teach the students yes okay okay just yes. want to make sure i'm understanding it's you also yeah I'm, it's, 
But it's also more than that because we host virtual happy hours. Right now it's virtual because of the pandemic. And we also do community service because it's important for our black and brown students to see their educators invested in their communities. When you think about how there's been, there was almost like this shift that happened Mm. after a certain time period where, you know, like back in the days, like when you were walk home from school, like everybody knew the teachers, everybody knew the Mm. people there in their communities. We're just trying to bring that community back. Mm, that's beautiful that's beautiful we need that yeah we hear that that's one thing the <laughs> older generation's always like back in my day and it is like wow it sounds like you guys are a lot nicer to each other I'm and happier sad. in your communities man you could not really it wasn't as easy walking to school back you know where, where i went to school we won't get too much into that but <laughs> it was Did definitely rough so, yes i went to north miami senior <laughs> high <laughs> so i appreciate what you're doing um yeah. i do want to ask though the background how did you what was the initial conversation? What made you and Maisha want to come together and say, okay, this is something we could do. Let's do it. So my best friend and I, uh, Maisha, she's going to join us soon. She uh, was my mentor teacher at the school that I taught at. Remember I was saying I have a middle school teacher. She was my mentor teacher. And there were so many things that she got me involved in on campus. Um, she ran SGA, so I was helping her fundraise. And then I, and then I created my own girls group. And it was one of those things where being in the thick of it, it was like, we felt like we were making change on the ground. But then there was also moments where we would feel frustrated about like the curriculums we were teaching, the stories we were teaching. And like, we felt like there there could be more could be done. And the pandemic happened and we were just like, both like, all right, well, we're bored. (laughs) What more can we do? And we were both very ambitious. We both are very passionate about the students that we teach. And it was one of those things where we just turned to each other and said, if not us, then who? If not now, then when? So That's beautiful. Wow. That's like Michael Jackson's man in the mirror. You have to be the change you want to see. You want to see. And, you know, we get on here week after week and we talk about how things are unfair for our people and you know it's set up like this for those people and not like that for us and the communities and i think it will not i think i know for a fact it comes down to people like you and your best friend uh your co-founder who are seeing the problem and deciding to be that change and doing something about the problem that's absolutely beautiful and uh charles and i here on baggage claim as we talk about finances uh it comes up a lot like well, it's about the teachers. And I feel it feels kind of heavy to put everything on the teachers, mm. you know, like, well, it's, hey, it goes back to education, it goes back to education. Do you feel any pressure in terms of being the future? I don't know if pressure is the right word. Mm-hmm. I thrive the pressure, so I don't know if I'm the right word. Yeah, okay. there we okay. go. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I, Motivation. Uh, I, 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 yeah, so it's more motivating for me, especially okay. with like financial literacy. I don't teach math, um, mm-hmm. but if I did, I feel like I'd be that one teacher that was like, all right, y'all, listen, so credit, <laughs> let's talk about it. Because when you really think about it, like, I don't know how it is with um, YouTube, but for me, like me and my mom and my parents, we didn't talk about credit growing up. That wasn't like something that we had conversations mm-hmm. about. Mm-hmm. Like I would ask, I'd be like, what is that? And he'd be like, oh no, like, mm-hmm. and, and now I'm an adult and I'm like, all right, so, I need this. Yeah. <laughs> it's here yeah. now. Yeah. You know, you have to, like, you know, you end up having awkward conversations with like bank lenders and they're like, so listen, so check it. And you're just like, wait, what? What's happening? Yeah. So like yeah. in my mind, it's like, I don't, one thing that I like that drives me and my whole motivation as a teacher is making it where my kids don't have to go through the same thing that I went through. Like mm-hmm. why, why we should be setting our, our like black and brown children up for success mm-hmm. because it doesn't like it's almost like this, this there's this mentality now where like oh i got it out the mud so you have to get it out the mud and i don't think like that at all like i no. think like, listen there's plenty of room at the top we could all eat especially since it's like where you live in a capitalistic society like there's a way for everybody to make it absolutely um, so i that. like <laughs> so what He's like, I she felt, felt that. that. Like, when you say capitalistic language. society, yeah. she <laughs> felt that. Like, I have conversations with people and I ask them like money questions and they get like, oh, wait. And I'm just like, okay, like, you know what? It doesn't have to be like that. Why can't we all figure it out? Like, one thing that I had a conversation with one of my boys, I teach high school, mm-hmm. and he's a day trader and he's making mm-hmm. a lot of money right now. Mm-hmm. And I said to him, I was like, why don't you make a TikTok or why don't you make a YouTube to explain to kids your age what you're learning? 
mm-hmm. especially if you're making all this money, like why not share the wealth, share the Absolutely. knowledge? And he was like, I never thought of it like that. And I was, and it's just one of those things like we don't, as I was saying before, like we don't have to do this thing where we hoard it. Like we need to think of a way to make it where everybody is doing well because we all benefit if everyone's making money. We all like our communities, like look at the, like Overtown. Overtown has changed dramatically in the last five years. And yeah. it's amazing. And it's all about how like these group of people came together and they started to build it. Why mm-hmm. we can all do that all over Miami. I think it's possible. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. We definitely can. So something you said there, you said to your student, why don't you, you know, and you gave him the idea yeah. of going on TikTok and, you know, mm-hmm. teaching it. And it was interesting that you said, he said, I never thought of it that way. So it's not yeah. that he purposely set out because I thought you were going to say, he's like, no, I don't want anyone else to know. But he just never even thought of, to sh- he never thought of the idea of sharing it, you know? Yeah. And so when we think about, when we, again, talk about how our teachers are really going to make this thing work for us and change the youth and things like that, you say, okay, so what exactly do you expect the teachers to do? Because like you said, you don't teach finance and you're not a financial professional, but we're sort of counting on, you know, educators to kind of fill in this gap. So what can uh, an educator like you do? And that is spark ideas, like sharing yeah. the knowledge. Yeah, absolutely. That was, I just wanted to point that out. Like, look, you're doing the work right now. That's what it looks I like. Mean, it's as simple as just saying like, you have a Robin Hood account? You should, yeah. or like selling them like, hey, like that money that you're making on the side, cause a lot of my kids also have jobs. So I'm like that money mm-hmm. that you're making on the side, you should put it in. Um, there's this bank account. Like, listen, you got, like, I'll be very honest. I, I know very little about finance, but I do know that there's this thing called a COD or something like that. I don't know if you guys know. Certificate of deposit. I don't know. It's like this bank account. It's like a special bank account and you put money in it and you can't touch it for like a year and it like doubles in interest. Yeah. Certificate yeah, like, of deposit. Yeah. Okay. So I, I know a little something. I was like, <laughs> yeah, <you> something. <laughs> and I was telling one of my kids that I was like, why don't you just take a certain of money, a certain amount of money out your check and deposit in that? And they're like, oh. So it's like it's not even like you have to like sit down and like make it boring and make it like this whole thing because I think maybe that's what it is. It's like this fear. Like we fear mm-hmm. the unknown, and it doesn't have to be that way. We could just explain it in very simple terms, like. Okay, so you have X amount of this. Why don't you take some of this, put it aside, and your money make money? I don't know. See, you talking, you could tell the kids, if my teacher spoke to me that way, I probably would have been more interested in money when I was younger. So that makes me think, okay, you're doing it on your own. You know, your own volition is what you want to do. Do you feel like the current school system kind of, you know, incentivizes teachers to talk to students about money about finances things like that and they don't you know ask the teachers to do it do you think the curriculum is set up to set the students up for success when it comes to their finances no um Hmm. and the reason i say that is that is there is this uh pressure from uh, standardized testing that makes it where there's not the much room. Yeah, it's all about the test, and there's not much room to like. There's not much r- wiggle room, if that makes any sense. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. It's very, it, it's very, it's very disappointing because you know, like those type of lessons usually have to happen at the end of the year when the kids already checked out and things like that. Yeah. Um, if they or if they even happen at all. Um, I don't really, I don't teach math, but I will say that. I try to have informal conversations because I feel like that works better. But I will say that for my math teachers who I do speak to about this type of thing, like there's all this pressure, making sure that they pass the FSA or the FCAT. Mm. And, you know, I think standardized testing has made it where our students have become robots. Mm. And it's really sad because I like to think that our children should be critical thinkers. And you can't think critically if you've been taught like to pick multiple choice <laughs> questions yeah. all your life. So yeah, yeah. And it's like one of those things where it comes it's like comes down to politics and making money like me, like and you know, it comes down to politics and, and money and it's 
and nothing to do with making sure that our kids get the education they deserve because to be honest, the SAT um, test standardized testing period is inherently biased against our children, against our black and brown children. Um, oh. Statistics have shown that it's not a very, it's not a accurate way to measure their intelligence. And mm -hmm. to be honest, we do need more um, like people, young people like you, people like coming in and explaining like finance in a way that is comprehensive and easy for students to understand. And, you know, our kids, they don't get like, they're, they're almost at a, at a disadvantage. You look mm -hmm. at statistics, um, I'm gonna pull something up really quick. In 2019, the median white household held $188,000 in wealth, which is 7.8 times that of the black household. So our kids are already at a disadvantage. Mm -hmm. And they see us for eight hours a day. So it would be the perfect time like for us to bring them to to help them get the tools they need for financial freedom. But there's no room in our lessons for that. So, hmm. wow, that's really interesting because, you know, as you said that there's no room in the curriculum. And if those conversations are had, it's because you again, once again, as a teacher, have taken it upon yourself to have these good deep, important conversations with your students. And that's just all on your own goodwill. But I remember in third grade, I think it's third grade, you take the FCAT for the first time. Yeah, That's yeah. when it started. And it was like third grade, that's FCAT year. And <laughs> everything we did, they would not stop talking about this FCAT. And after that, of course, you, you know, you have your testing years going through high school and middle school, but it became about the test. And so you're saying there's no room. And earlier we're like, oh, I guess we leave it up to the educators, but you're right. The educators are, you're being told you have to teach specific things. You're not coming up with the curriculum, the curriculum yourself. So it's kind of like people in, people like us, <laughs> we got to go to the schools, you know, yeah. we got to yeah. educate the kids. Definitely. Yeah. Interesting. Definitely, definitely. Um, so how do you think it can improve? So you're saying, you know, the curriculum it has you kind of feeling restricted in a box. Yeah. This is what you do. You say th critical thinking. I want you to critically think. How do you think it can improve just based on your own thought process off of your own experience? Well, for one, let's create curriculum where our students are reading and learning about people that look like them. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> that's for that's for one. Sure. To, um, you know, that, like a lot of people don't know this and I didn't even learn this until I was in like college, but Mansa Musa was the richest mm -hmm. man alive and the way they'll let you believe it. Like I read this one article, they were trying to make it seem like it was Jeff Bezos. And I was just like, no, 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 no. <laughs> so <laughs> um, just things like that, just educating them and empowering them and using the using curriculum that is that I reflected in because there's this one quote that never leaves me that children should have windows and mirrors and the things that in the things that they read and what that means is like windows into other experiences and mirrors into about their own and mm -hmm. i feel like that applies to like financial literacy that applies to english language arts that just uh, across the board like if there are stories about black and brown people who achieved financial freedom and did it in a way that wasn't grimy or shysty that yeah. it'd be something it'd be really interesting for them to read about it and it, it would empower them and make them be like okay like i could do this one day um mm -hmm. and also like you know just placing that emphasis back on collectivism like may like the power of the black dollar is phenomenal we are we are a very powerful group when it comes to our money. And we need more black grocery stores in Miami. We need more black owned businesses in Miami. And figuring out a way to just leverage that into, into power. Yeah. Absolutely. See, you preaching. <laughs> you preaching, you saying everything right, everything we need. <laughs> I want to take it back to younger days. I'm going to ask you, Jazz, then I'm going to ask you. Okay. okay. Do you remember learning about, A, in school, do you remember learning about wealth in a way that you could comprehend? And then, B, do you remember learning about wealth and seeing yourself in the stories, yourself as a Black person in school? Um, okay, so the first one, wealth. I remember I was in class, and I don't know how old I was, but I remember I was really young, so I must have been elementary. And 
uh, we talked about jobs that would pay you a lot. And I remember I was just thinking like, well, what's the, what's the job that I can make the most money in? And I was like, oh, well, I'll be the president. Cause everyone was talking <laughs> like, I'm gonna be a doctor. I'm gonna be yeah. a this. So I was like, well, I'm gonna be the president. He must make all the money. Mm -hmm. And then I remember the teacher overheard and she was like, well, he only makes about 300,000. And in my head, I was like, 300,000, that sounds like a lot of money. And I think I never really, it never really got clarified <laughs> until I was much older. Like what yeah. is a lot of money? What is wealth? The concept of wealth, it didn't really, I didn't understand. No. Okay. So they didn't really talk about it. How about black wealth? Did you see yourself like in any stories, like in history or math, anything like that? No, no, absolutely not. Mm -mm. Mm. No. How about you, Zaira? Um, learning about wealth as a kid uh in school in school no, not really um mm. learning about people that look like me uh not until unless it was black history month not until high school i really appreciated <laughs> i mean let's just be honest and if it wasn't martin luther king oh and then they don't even tell you the rosa full part <laughs> <laughs> martin luther king and rosa parks slavery That's and martin it. luther king <laughs> and rosa parks <laughs> They don't even tell you the full story. They tell yeah. you like their version of it. It's like, oh, well, Martin Luther King. It, like <laughs> I saw this one thing on Twitter that made me laugh, and it's like Martin Luther King wanted us all to be free, and then he died. <laughs> and you're like, that's oh. not even the full story. Like you he don't, had a dream. I don't even think I yeah, it's about the dream. <laughs> so, it's about the dream. <laughs> that's what it is. Yeah. And then um, I don't even think I learned about um the fact that he was trying to like something in his like his whole vision shifted mm -hmm. to how he was trying to create economic yes. that he realized he was like you know what like it's okay integration that's fine you know what y'all can have it what we're gonna try to do is make money and like the whole thing where he was helping the people that's um when he was killed in memphis i believe mm -hmm. i don't know if i misspoke it but he was trying to help the sanitation workers unionize and he realized like it was almost like one thing i do appreciate about my grandparents also is like and just the upbringing that i had is like they really stressed to me the power of like the black dollar and yeah. one of my favorite movies is malcolm x um i could sit through the whole three hours of it and he really understood like that that power like you know with nation even like with the, their whole ideology like outside of the ideology it was all about just that philosophy of sp circulating the black dollar like they had black dry cleaners they had black grocery stores like they understood like the power of like us spending money in our own neighborhoods and mm -hmm. that we didn't need to leave there like there's people who have these skills and who have this it was almost like this collective power so um I mean, I was taught that type of thing, those type of things at home, but as far as school, no. And mm. I really appreciate my high school um, English teachers because it, like they taught, like I read books that wasn't just about black people. I read books about um, Asian people, about Hispanic mm -hmm. people. One of my favorite books is In the Time of the Butterflies and mm. it's about the Dominican uh, revolution. Uh, Obasan, which is about the Holocaust, the, not Holocaust, sorry, the um, Japanese internment camps that happened mm -hmm. in World War II. You know, just again, as I said before, windows and mirrors, windows into other perspectives, mirrors in, that reflect your own. So, and as far as like financial literacy, no, that's why college was so hard. <laughs> you go to college and you're like, <laughs> how many days can I make this ramen stretch? <laughs> and they tempt you. They got people trying to give you free yeah, credit cards credit all credit over card. campus. It's yeah. kind of predatory, but we won't yeah, speak about cards. it. <laughs> yeah, credit cards. Credit cards. Yes. So, okay. So, Mino Learning is going to make this thing so different. It's doing the actual work in the field, you are there. Um, what are some of the things you do for the community? Like just how, better question, how can uh, viewers, people of the community who aren't educators, how can we help? Is it just spreading the word? Is it um, volunteering? You yeah, guys hold us. things, you plan on holding things? Go ahead, sorry. Yeah. So yeah, just join us. We have, like follow us on Instagram. Our Instagram is M-I-N-O learning. Mm -hmm. um, we hold 
parents, educators, community leaders, uh, community advocates, period, just come join us. We are supposed to be having another community service event for Women's History Month. We mm -hmm. just had one um, this past weekend, not the weekend that we're in, but the weekend before that we had, we partnered with the Green Haven Project and we were out there gardening. It was a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. And as I said before, it's just important for us to create this collective, for us to create this community of BIPOC educators coming together and creating the change that we want to see. So if you are down for that, you're down to ride, we, we're always down to have people join us. Let's get to it. I'm That's down to ride. Yeah. I can't make the last one, but I'll be at the next one. That's awesome. <laughs> so you said collective again. Again, you said collective. Yes, I was going to say that too. I'm yeah. saying, when you were speaking about Martin Luther King, you were right. Yeah. You hit the nail on the head towards the end of his life. Uh, he realized it wasn't necessarily about black, white, this and that, but more yeah, so about more economic right. empowerment because he's like, OK, you're black. I'm black. You're white. But yet we're in the same position. Mm -hmm. Something's got to change. So you spoke about that. You said collectivism. When mm -hmm. you were speaking about me no learning, you said collectivism. I know you said your grandparents raised you on that. Yeah. There seems to be an emphasis on collectivism with me no learning. Yeah. I want to know. Mm -hmm. How are you going to incorporate financial literacy in that collectivism with Mino Learning? Because I understand what you're doing. You know, you said, mm -hmm. you know, you were uh, with the Greenhaven Project. You know, you were, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Volunteering there. You mm -hmm. had the women's movement. Uh, but this is a finance show. We really want to know how are you going to incorporate <laughs> finance? Like, that's the main thing. Talk about the money, the bags. Um, I think for me, it was like how I pulled you into our our YouTube um, channel. And I was like, you know what? Um, I see Charles doing his thing. Let me see. I know that my babies and my parents need to learn more about um, financial literacy. So mm -hmm. let's create an opportunity for me to ask questions that I've always had and that I know people like me have. And it's like also like how I asked you, I was like, what can educators do? Or... Yeah what's like a simple way to explain money. And those just one for me is like using the network that I have to create opportunities for one, us to collaborate. Uh, that comes back to the collectivism, but two, also just to spread the information for everybody to know. It's, it's like, what do we gain if there's only one person gatekeeping all this information? Nothing. Mm -hmm. um, in the future, I hope that we, this collaboration can continue because I would love for you guys to come out like, you know, post pandemic, post vaccine, <laughs> love yeah. for you guys to come out and just talk to my kids like because you guys are young and you guys look like them and just explaining it to them in a way that's comprehensive and easy for them to understand. Because one thing about financial literacy, one thing for me, at least, like I'm not really into math like that. So I think that's mm -hmm. why I struggled with it for so long. And I really wish that I had like um, opportunities like opportunities to just learn from people who look like me one and also people who could explain it to me in just an easy way. Cause like when you hear credit and the books that they usually recommend and the it's really like, it's like, uh, oh, you know what? Never right. mind. I'll die for. <laughs> <laughs> but like, it's good that we have shows like this and it's good that we have uh, like opportunities like this. I think for me also is just, figuring out ways to like connect educators. That was another reason I wanted Charles to come on was because it was like, okay, like I wanted it to be one of those things like someone would see Charles and be like, all right, he's a young black man. He can come talk to my kids. Or mm -hmm. you know what, maybe I'll consult him when I have uh, a lesson plan that I want to do on financial literacy. Just figuring out ways for us all to connect because as I said before, there's like all these different pockets and we could all just come together and share the wealth that we all, share the wealth of knowledge that we all have. Absolutely. Yeah. That, I'm like, oh, that's so I beautiful. Yes, I genuinely feel it. I mean, I just exactly like how I feel. Yeah, we really do need to understand that we are better together as a collective. We can get so much more done. And the hoarding of information, the mm -hmm. hoarding of ideas, it's not going to get any of us any further. Mm -hmm. We're so much better together. And I think it's uh, an absolutely wonderful idea, this Mino learning that you guys have created. And Charles, you're right. It is going to take people like us uh, <laughs> to come out there and talk to the kids. And uh, we are always down and just not just people like us, but people in our industry of color, you know, people of color in our industry to be doing the same things. And again, like you said, teachers to also reach out. And 
one other thing you said that I absolutely loved is the babies need it, but also the parents. So if we have this collective community and we are educating not just the students, but the parents as well, that knowledge can go so much. Absolutely. Oh, we're uh, you good? You here? <laughs> you good? <laughs> Hold on. Uh -oh. uh, you're on mute. Can you hear? Oh, maybe she muted it because it was noisy. Uh -oh. Sorry, that was the. Uh, you know, you know, we live in Miami. That was the bikers riding through. I'm sorry. Oh, <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> now you good? Um, continue. All right. So, yeah, I want to switch okay. gears a little bit. I want to ask about uh teaching in this decade. That's okay. Oh yes. All right. So. You mentioned the pandemic. Mm. I've been reading a lot of articles lately, and for some reason, there is a lot of focus on the students and their lack of learning during the pandemic. They're saying a lot of kids are going to be left behind, particularly black kids, you know, kids who look like us, unfortunately. I wanted to know, you know, what do you think about that, about the pandemic having a negative long term effect on? as you would say, BIPOC children, black and indigenous people of color. Take your time, take your time. <laughs> um, yeah, this topic is like one of those things where I hope I just don't cry because it's just really sad. Oh, um, no, it's, it's okay. It's just, whew, it's been a really long school year really has um our kids deserve so much better and um i think it really sucks when you have kids tell you that um that they have to choose between going to school and like working and um it also sucks to see the like amount of children who won't graduate or who won't just, who like are just like gonna be at a deficit because of um, because of everything that's happened this school year. And it was one of those things where this pandemic has really shown the inequities that are in place for our black and brown students. It's also made it where um, it's like just really, it's also made it where like it's become really apparent, like a lot of systemic issues that we have in America mm -hmm. and our education system. Um, a lot of people view us as babysitters, like teachers. Mm -hmm. Um, and it, it, it's, it's disheartening. Um, do I think that our students are, um, can learn? On Zoom, personally, no, because I've had kids, this is my opinion, um, mm -hmm. but I've had kids who like never showed up on Zoom ever. Mm -hmm. And then they show up to the classroom when we had to be in the building physically and they wowed me, they amazed me. And then I've had kids straight up tell me like, miss, like, I'm not gonna lie to you. When you were on Zoom, I, I couldn't focus. I had siblings in the background. I had um, people telling me things that I needed to get done. Mm -hmm. It's one of those things where I've seen a lot of educators do go above and beyond for the kids that they teach. And mm -hmm. I, 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 at my school, I feel appreciated. I will say that. Like, I like the people, like um, the administration that I work for. Um, so I feel appreciated, but I can see like how you said earlier, like it's a thankless job. I can, it is very much a thankless job. And, um, you know, I'm grateful every day because there are people who don't have a job right now and there are, and that's very apparent because, you know, when you have kids telling you like, you know, my mom doesn't have a job right now, so I have to work. Mm -hmm. I, have to, like, I have to provide. Mm -hmm. Who am I to sit up there and just be like, like, you know, like, yeah, school comes Your first. homework, yeah. Yeah, like, who am I to do that? Like, in the beginning, well, I, like, I was, like, really, like, oh, like, deadlines. But now I've been more lax with deadlines. Like, we're in a pandemic. Let's have grace. And one thing that I keep telling myself is, like, 
you can't have grace for others if you don't have grace for yourself. Mm -hmm. And for anybody else who's watching this, like for any educators and you're feeling like overwhelmed and you're feeling like, you know, I'm not doing enough. You're doing, you're, you're making it. We're in a pandemic. Like this is like not, this is once in a lifetime. Think about it. Like, this happens like every 100 years. The last pandemic was in like what, 19, like 10s? 1913, something yeah, like that. Yeah, like something like that. Like that's wild. Like we'll be able to tell our grandkids that we were alive during something that they won't ever see. Mm -hmm. You are doing the best that you can. Keep it like, just have grace for yourself. Absolutely. Like, yeah. Yeah. Wow. That was, um, I had, I had a hard time not getting emotional because I can just feel, you know, that you are someone who you don't just do the job. You love the job and it's deeper than just the job. It's about the kids and education as well, a whole. And I can imagine how this pandemic has made that so hard. Yeah. With, with, but with being a teacher, like it's one of those things you can't have like one foot out. You have to be 10 toes down. Hmm. Well, see, I'm glad you say that because I feel like that's the reason why you need teachers who can relate to you you know what i'm saying mm, yeah. i being from miami going to school in the hood you kind of see you could tell the teachers that really care the ones who come out of their pockets and really yeah. help the students put in extra time which i'm sure you do and the other teachers who probably are there to pay off their student loans i yeah. feel like <laughs> that should not be the case yeah you're you know? saying that because we've had teachers I'm who we feel didn't yeah. care as much or weren't you know but honestly i feel like you as a young teacher um i'm i'm assuming you're young you look young girl <laughs> you know you as a younger teacher uh you know i feel like the younger generation of teachers maybe they're better maybe they care nah, more it it's it's still, For me, it's it was still all young the, people every teacher i've had that i had a bad experience with was older she was like much older than the other teachers uh, i'm talking more so about in the hood Oh, you're right. My bad. Um, <laughs> was like, you can't relate. You didn't no. <laughs> no, I wouldn't say all that. Yeah, um, I will say, like, us younger ones, we are, like, we're still figuring life out. Like, we're not that much that's different. That's such a burden. That's so true. That's, a, that's heavy. Um, like, I mean, it's wow. very, it, it is, like, and um, it's easy to get jaded. Like, I've seen, uh, like, I've seen, um, I've seen it where it, like situ certain situations has made it where I had to pick, I had to sit there and be like, all right, listen, it is what it is and what it ain't <laughs> like, like, and it's not even, it's not even, it's really never the kids either. Like kids are like, it's developmentally appropriate for a child to like yell at you or mm -hmm. developmentally appropriate for a child to like go through like hormones and just be like, forget it. I'm having a lie. <laughs> like that's the most <laughs> appropriate. Um, but it is one of those things, like as Charles said before, it's a thankless job. So there are days where you go home and you're like, man, you know what? No one said thank you. No one. Like, oh, you know what? Maybe I need to just sleep in my bed. They'll appreciate me. <laughs> No, we definitely appreciate you. We appreciate you, your colleagues, all the I'm educators, sorry. everyone in Mino Learning, every everyone in Mino Learning, especially who's doing something to make the world a better place. And it really starts with you. Back to Michael Jackson. Uh, if you want to <laughs> see, if you want, you got to be the. This video <laughs> <recently>? <laughs> That's like one of my favorite songs. Here's <laughs> your favorite song, y'all. Shout yes. out MJ. Shout out MJ. You have to be the change, and you guys are being the change. I absolutely love it. And we just want to say we totally appreciate you, and thank you again for joining us. Really, definitely. You know what? You struck a nerve too. I'm so glad you're speaking the way that you're speaking. You could probably tell. I remember in school the teachers who didn't care, and that used to tick me off. You, did you have city year at your school? Yes. Yeah, Wait, that, in high school? No, in mid not high school. No, 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 no. Pause. I never had city year, but when I started teaching, I I know mm -hmm. about city year. Yes, I'm I'm familiar with them. What is city okay, year? Okay, okay. They're That's like. like they're like a so I'm a former member of a teaching preparation program, but like city year is they're interventionists. They go into the classroom and they tutor the kids. It's a good program. Uh, yeah. And they have like the jackets, like the red jackets. You know what I'm talking the about? The red jackets. Yes. Yeah, the red jackets. The ones I remember, they couldn't really relate. There were a few that could, but a lot of them couldn't really relate. Uh, so I guess that's the reason why it's just bringing back old memories. 
<laughs> yeah, no. Um, when I was in high school, I used to like participate in like uh, poetry slams. And mm -hmm. at one poetry slam, this one girl, I, that's how I, I had to go and Google what city year was because she tore up the stage. She had on her oh. red jacket, was killing it. Yeah. But, um, that was beautiful. Yeah. That's definitely beautiful. Um, well, it sounds like you're wrapping up. You uh, have anything else? No, unless you got anything else. Uh, no, I'm good. Oh, we can say hello. But oh, sorry. Um, for sure, for sure. Hello, good evening. Hi, Mr. Ingrao. Hey, good evening, sir. Hello, Miss Brown. How you doing? Hello, Mr. Jones. What's up? What's up? Hello, Miss Hall. Hello, Miss McCreary. Hey, how you guys doing? Thanks. Thanks again for watching. Thank everyone for tuning in. Um, yeah. And one thing, tell them uh, where to find you. Tell them how to find yes. you. Okay, so we're on Instagram and Facebook at M I N O Learning. And you can also find us on YouTube. We're the Radical Teacher. And also make sure you check out the last episode that we did with Charles and A.D. Williams. It was a lot of fun. And we talked about a lot of financial literacy tips for our black kids and how to just give them that comprehensive, easy to understand money tips, how to secure the bag. What y'all say again? I like that. <laughs> how to claim the bag. Claim secure the bag. the bag and most yeah. importantly protect, protect the, the bag. bag you know the vibes <laughs> <laughs> yeah. in my classroom like hey y'all listen i got a new thing <laughs> yes. like one joke inside of like the education world is like we don't we we steal from each other like we'll be like oh i like that i'm gonna use that in the lesson yeah, yeah. No, yes. i'm gonna make Go sure ahead. that you watch this it's okay it's collectivism yes. you know sharing <laughs> like, what's ours is yours <laughs> <laughs> And you know what? I'm glad you brought up A.D. Williams. I just want to give him a shout out real quick. Uh, yeah. He has a book, Mansa's Little Reminders, mm -hmm. Scratching the Surface. So Mansa's Little Reminders, that is a book written by a black man. Uh, it's about financial literacy and it's actually, you know, made for young black children, ages mm -hmm. six through 12. So, you know, you can find it on Amazon. Is that Google. Mansa like Mansa Musa? That's like amazing. Yeah. You just spoke about Mansa Musa. Yeah. Uh -huh. So, yeah, you guys check that out. And of course, Henderson, uh, Robert Henderson, he has uh, a book as well. He's releasing another book. Just support black. That's what it's about. Support black. Support me. No learning. They're doing something in the neighborhood for our people, for our children. And it's yeah. clearly important. If you can't tell, Zahira is extremely <laughs> passionate about this. Yeah. Those are the people you need to support. Yes. So that that's my little spill. <laughs> <laughs> All righty. Um, right, anything else? No, I'm good. All right. Thank you guys for tuning in. Absolutely. Thank you. Yes, yes. No you guys uh, enjoy your Sunday. Bye. Bye, everyone.